the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show. It's time to talk about an untapped potential of Marlon Davidson, 49ers' new defensive tackle. The 49ers brought him in this year, and he's looking to make an impact on this 49ers roster, and he's still a young guy. He was just drafted in the 2020 NFL Draft, so there's a lot of potential that could still be coming out of Marlon Davidson. And Marlon Davidson had a pretty good season in 2021, uh, but after that, he was released. He had an injury in 2022, and the Falcons decided to move on from him. Uh, but who is Marlon Davidson? He's a guy that's six foot three, uh, about 305 pounds, and he's got an 80 uh, and four eighths wingspan. He's a guy that, when he played at Auburn in college, played on the outside as an edge rush. But everyone kind of understood he was going to be a conversion to defensive tackle, and that's what he ended up playing. There are moments where he was a big base 4-3 defensive end for the Atlanta Falcons, but primarily in 2021, they moved him inside where he got most of his reps. And he's a tremendously athletic guy on the inside. A little bit of uh, some strength issues at time, and we're going to go over his strengths and weaknesses but I think he's a moldable clay and he's still a young player. And we've been talking about these players that the 49ers are going out and getting. And one of those players in Marlon Davidson is sort of a similar process uh, to Cleveland Farrell and uh, players like Austin Bryant that maybe they just haven't got as many opportunities as they would like. They've been marred by a little bit of injuries and the 49ers are trying to take advantage of extreme talent. And Marlon Davidson's a former second round pick, pick 47. So there's a lot of ability and talent there that the 49ers could definitely take advantage of. Uh, watching his film, I was impressed with some. I went back and I watched some of his time at Auburn playing on the edge. I, I saw a little bit of a bend from a very big player, uh, but also I saw the athleticism to be able to run down the line of scrimmage and track uh, quarterbacks and running backs, which I found very impressive. And then I went and watched his Atlanta film, and I think it was a little bit lackluster compared to what you see in college. Uh, but there are probably several reasons for that. I think there are a couple of things he needs to get better at, but with Chris Kisarek's defense, I think some of those things will get solved. He definitely has a little bit of a problem disengaging with offensive linemen. If they get their hands on him, he can struggle sometimes to shed that block and make a tackle. He can also be blocked by one man in the run game, and that is definitely not something you want. So how do you go ahead and overcome those things? Well, you move into a system like Chris Kacerics, where it's built on speed and penetration and getting past the offensive lineman and not so much on holding your ground against an offensive player. So most of the time, defensive players are taught that they need to go ahead and control gaps. Uh, so you want to control a gap. Even when you're getting double teamed, you have to anchor down, uh, get skinny, and uh, not allow them to push you back. In Chris Kacerik's defense, you penetrate through that double team by getting skinny and getting into the backfield. There are definitely different reads uh, for different offenses, especially when offenses are doing a lot of pulling and things of that nature. But when it comes down to uh, how you play in Kacerik's defense, it's just different than you play in other places. So a player that was predetermined to do one set of things in the NFL, it gets somewhat changed up, and that's why they can have success in another system. So that's what Chris Kacerik does. He he finds these players that he liked coming out of college, and then when they don't pan out somewhere else, he says, hey, you know what? What would happen if we got them into our system and were able to use their natural gifts in the way uh, that they are intended to be used? Because playing a player out of position happens a lot in the NFL. And some careers are ruined by it and others, they get a second chance and they go out and they prove that, hey, as long as I'm put into a situation where I can use my best skills, I'm going to be successful. But not all head coaches and position coaches 
see the potential in each of their players or know how to use their best skill set to their advantage. And that is something that Kacerik has consistently proven he's able to do. That's why I say when you have a guy with untapped potential like Marlon Davidson, he has a shot to succeed with Chris Kacerik and the 49ers because the things that he's really built on are athleticism, quickness, uh, and those things work out in this system, not only penetrating, but with stunts, uh, also getting between double teams without having to man up, but actually getting skinny and penetrating between them. Where, where I'm a little bit worried about Marlon Davidson is in those double team situations like we just talked about, is him not being able to get skinny, get off the ball quick enough and get through, and getting pushed back. That is something that plagued the 49ers defensive line in 2019 a little bit, uh, when they were getting pushed off and teams were running on them. And we've seen it in other areas as well, including last season. There are times that players like Kevin Givens, who is another Marlon Davidson type player, uh, will get double teamed and pushed back, creating huge run lanes for these teams. And that was something Atlanta took advantage of on the 49ers last year. No Nick Bosa meant no real worries on the edge. And then you can double up on the inside and get a push against the 49ers quicker, smaller defensive tackles. It's one of the things that the 49ers brought Kinlaw in for was to get a bigger uh, force in the middle. That's why they brought in Hassan Ridgeway as well last year was to stop the run. Teams were double teaming at the point of attack, pushing them back and being able to make plays that way if they had a power run game. The 49ers use penetration, speed, and athleticism to overcome uh, the obstacles of going against those double teams. But if you're not able to do it, then you're going to struggle. With Marlon Davidson, he's got the ability to do it. He's got the techniques. He's got the, the skill level uh, to be able to do it. The question mark is, does he have the strength after transitioning from defensive end to defensive tackle in the NFL? It has been a few years, and his body should be a lot different. Of course, not playing in 2022 means he's probably got a little bit of rust he's going to have to knock off as well. But if that strength can transition or he has built that strength up, then he's definitely able to play defensive tackle for Chris Kacerik. You have that speed uh, and ability to go around offensive linemen or to go through double teams, and you just fit. He also hasn't had very much production in the in uh, pass rushing, but that's something he'll be afforded to do if he can prove it during training camp. I think he's a very exciting uh, prospect for the 49ers because I look at this guy as a clean slate. You bring him in, you act like he's a rookie just coming into the league, even though he's already uh, played in the league and knows about the size, speed, uh, difference of NFL players, the, you know, the different uh, continuity of offensive line and defensive line play. He understands what you have to do, but you treat him as a rookie and you really try to build him from the ground up. You work on him staying low. You work on his hand placement. You work on all those things and you see if you could develop him into something that could potentially help your defensive line and help your defensive line rotation. A problem for Marlon Davidson to be able to untap his potential is going to be competing against the other very formidable defensive linemen for the 49ers. Armstead, Hargrave, they're out of this world. They're spectacular. Uh, then we talked about Kevin Givens earlier, who is Marlon Davidson uh, clone. They're, they're very similar in the way that they approach and play the game. And then you've got guys like Kinlaw, who's a huge run stopper, and Kalia Davis, who's another guy that's built to win on penetration, built more like DJ Jones. And you've got a nice rotation. You throw in Spencer Wagey, the undrafted free agent out of North Dakota State, and you've got a formidable group to be able to compete with. But when you're picked number 47 overall in a draft, you think you have a lot of talent. Marlon Davidson has a lot of talent. The 49ers could definitely develop him and create a nice rotation with him in the mix. Last year, they got a lot of uh, plays out of T.Y. McGill. Now McGill's back, and he's going to be looking to compete for playing time as well. But what will Marlon Davidson look like when he gets into Chris Kacerik's defensive scheme? That's what I'm really curious to see. We're talking about a guy that dropped off in zone coverage and a guy that even intercepted Tom Brady in 2021 and took it to the house for a touchdown. Fun play to watch. Those types of things mean he's definite fit for this 49er scheme. You throw in the fact Steve Wilkes likes to uh, fire zone blitz, and that means you drop off defensive linemen into coverage. Doesn't mean he's athletic enough to go run with a running back or anything like that, 
But to drop into a zone and potentially take away somebody in that area, he can definitely do it. So he has all the pieces and all the tools to play for this 49ers defense. Chris Kacarek is his best chance to figure out what his potential actually is. If he's unable to do it, it might be his last stop in the NFL. Seems like the 49ers have a lot of players that are coming in with that same mentality. It means they're going to be hungry. They're going to be ready to go. They're going to be looking to make an impact on the 49ers roster. Super excited about Marlon Davidson and just seeing how he progresses in Kacarek's system. Now, they gave him a, a decent contract, but no guaranteed money. $955,000 is great for a veteran player like this. But knowing that there's no risk if he doesn't work out means the 49ers feel, feel comfortable just in case it doesn't work out. And it also means Marlon Davidson is betting on himself that it will. He believes he can make this roster. And that's the attitude he's going to need. He's going to have to go out there every single day and earn it. And when he's out there in training camp, he better be playing harder and more physical than everybody else that he's competing against. It's going to be fun to watch this rotation for the 49ers defensive line. We've been talking about each one of them, their skills. The 49ers definitely have a talented group. Chris Kacarek is going to be developing an interior defensive line that's going to be predicated on a lot of speed. And if they can go ahead and penetrate and make plays and not get pushed off the line in double teams, uh, they're going to have a lot of success. And I think Marlon could, Davidson could be a part of that if he's able to overcome not being able to disengage with offensive linemen. If he can start doing that, learn the techniques, that he could be an impact player for the 49ers in 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. On the way to 4K. Really appreciate all the support. More content coming your way. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. But until then, stay safe. And remember the right way is always the 49ers way.